Hi, welcome to another edition of Full STEM Ahead. My name is Bob Andrucci. I'm a science teacher at Liberty High School. We met last year in the Rose Garden where we explored some of the chemistry of fall color, the beautiful trees that are in the Rose Garden. Well, today we're here to talk about another environmental topic. This is the spotted lanternfly, a beautiful looking pest, but a lot of negative press in the news today. What's very interesting is that Penn State Right, our local university is really at the forefront of the research for this spotted lanternfly. And I have with me today Dr. Neil Hendrickson. He's from the Bartlett Tree Expert Research Laboratory in North Carolina, and he has worked closely with these Penn State researchers. So, Dr. Hendrickson, they're beautiful, but how'd they get here? Well, they first were found in 2014 in Berks County on a load of landscape stone as egg masses. They're very difficult to see as egg masses. It's putty colored and they blend it in with the rocks. And then once they were here and those insects emerged in the spring, they spread through what is now the 14 counties of quarantine. And how did they spread? They, they're one of their best descriptions is as hitchhikers. They're incredibly effective hitchhikers at all life stages from the time they're hatched to the time they're adults. They stick like Velcro to even shiny waxed car surfaces. surfaces. So if anyone parks a car at this time of year where they're laying eggs and drives it somewhere else, they'll go where that car went. That's why the quarantine, which is also six counties in New Jersey, it, the lanternfly has been found just the other day in Connecticut. It's in New Jersey. It's in Long Island, New York. Uh, it's well established in Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, so it's jumped all the quarantines because people are moving it. Cars, trains, produce, lumber, you name it. So Dr. Neal, speaking of how it got here, thanks for sharing that. Now we have them here, here they are. Um, we're hearing so much in the news about how these things are killing trees and we should be dealing with them, but I don't think anyone has a, a great method of what we're doing out there. So what is research telling us to deal with the spotted lanternfly? Well, early on, uh, Penn State and Bartlett worked closely together to try to see what they were doing and what we might do about it. The good news is, except for people who have vineyards, grapes, and hops, they're mostly just disgusting. When they're around a house, well, they're inefficient feeders, and when they suck sap out of a tree, they excrete a lot of it. That's it, a great point, because I hear people say that when they're standing under a tree full of lanternflies, it's almost raining. And is that raining their excrement? Yes, it's yeah. raining a sugary syrup. Mm. And because they extract it, they concentrate it, and they extract so much of it, it does sound like rain, it feels like rain, but it's sticky. It's called honeydew, and that pretty well describes it. Awesome. All right, so look, this guy's trying to get out. We're going to probably get a chance to use these in some of our classes. We can examine them. You were going to tell us about males versus females and how they spread. Do these guys fly? Do they hop? Do they, do they run? Although how are they getting around? Okay, good point. Good question. Although they're called lantern flies, they're plant hoppers. So what they do is they are, have very, very strong ability to hop. And they have this need to climb trees because the way they hop is to get to the top of a tree, catch a breeze, and they can hop for 30 feet, uh, sometimes a lot more. I've seen them catch a breeze and go a lot farther. So what can homeowners do? I've seen sticky bands, and I'll just jump in as a birder. A lot of times those sticky bands trap yeah. birds and a lot of people are concerned about that. And what I'm hearing in, 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 in the things I read is that it's a multi-faceted approach. You can't just do one thing. How would you recommend homeowners kind of deal with spotted lanternfly? 
Well, in the first case, when they're very young, what are called nymphs, they're very pretty, they're black and white, uh, black with white dots, they'll feed on anything. So if you try to treat one plant, they'll probably be on a different one in a few days. So by the time you come back, you'll have to treat something else. But remember, uh, for a homeowner with plants around their house, it's mostly just disgusting because of the honeydew which becomes slippery. It also does biological damage in that as honeydew coats other plants, it turns those leaves black, keeps them from photosynthesizing, number one. Number two, if it gets on toys, patio surfaces, steps, it becomes extremely slippery and it attracts almost every type of stinging insect that loves the black, the honeydew and the, that's with the material called black sooty mold that colonizes the sugary substance. Right, I've, I've seen that too. So if this um, honeydew is uh, around a deck or a playset, that can be attractive to yellow jackets and other stinging insects um, for sure. So where are these guys or ladies spending the winter? Are they dying or what's happening with them? Yeah, if once they lay eggs, which is approximately September through December, depending on temperature, then the egg masses get covered. And if you look at them on a tree, you'll and look very carefully and scrape them, you'll see the eggs are laid in long rows, about 50 or 60 at a time. Then these adults die, and the adults will, and the uh, nymphs will start to emerge about June. From the eggs. From the eggs that these lay at this time of year. And then you'll see what are called four instars. Three are small and black with white dots. The last one's very pretty because it's bright red before it becomes an adult. So these in April will not look like this. They're going to come out as, a, as this nymph you're saying. They are and children then will. these start to show up around July. Mm -hmm. This sort of the adult oh, look. Yep. Excellent. Well, Dr. Henderson, thank you very much for joining us today on Full STEM Ahead. We learned a lot. And... We're hopefully going to take these back and have some of our students look at them. My pleasure. Thank you for having me and uh, thank your uh, uh, audience for being so attentive.